Welcome back to the Budget Gamer channel where we bring you critical and in-depth reviews of just about every indie game we can get our hands on and today we're going to be taking a look at Luca Born of a Dream for the Nintendo Switch. And being another port over to the Switch, it has been out for a while, but if you've heard anything about it, you've probably heard some of the controversy over the game's underarching tones as well as its graphic appeal. But regardless of how it's masked, you may be very surprised to find out just how mechanically solid this game actually is. The story, though, is highly interpretive and might actually take a few hours of gameplay for you to even understand some of the opening sequences, so in efforts to not spoil anything, I'm kind of just going to skip past the story for this one. But as the visuals are one of the biggest dividing lines for fans or potential fans of this game, that's probably something that we'll want to address first. The visuals in the game are vividly stark, and it was the developer's intention to tell their story through the use of shadow and through rhetorical absence. And in that sense, the general scenery might appear to the player to be incredibly barren, but do work really, really well to capture not only the vibe, but the undertext of the story. And the visuals appearing as though they were clawed out by some neon demon in a child's etch-a-sketch really do well to capture a lot of that surrealistic dreamlike vibe. Additionally, the music in the game was used almost in more of a Silent Hill kind of way to be sparse just like the graphics, but keep the player on the edge of their seats with that almost impending anxiety that you'd get more from a horror survival game. And though this is definitely a fast-paced, top-down hack-and-slash adventure, it's a game that'll also have you on the edge of your seat a bit like a psychological thriller. However, regardless of how controversial the appeal of the graphics of the audio soundtrack may be, the bones and mechanics of the game are, as mentioned before, incredibly solid. Luca Born of a Dream is a semi-open world adventure game with a bit of the feel of a roguelike dungeon crawler in that combat takes place in more of a room-to-room -room kind of setting. But all of the combat in the game, regardless of whether it's an area boss or a mob, is going to be incredibly challenging and require fast-paced Twitch combat. As such, you'll be required to engage in combat through a flurry of combinations of light and heavy attacks, as well as the liberal use of ranged attacks from up to nearly a dozen unlockable familiars you can find through the course of your gameplay. Each familiar will have its own attack style, whether it's a slower armor-piercing round, faster longer range, or spread shots, or even OP laser blasts. But with nearly a dozen familiars to choose from, that's about as little diversity as the game actually has to show. Through the course of your gameplay, you'll stumble across different mantras, which act as different combat styles. And whether that's allowing you longer ranged attacks, faster combat, heavier blows with a shorter range, you can combine your overarching mantra as well as a subgenre of mantra, along with your familiar, to design incredibly unique combat styles. Not only that, you can set up a main and a sub mantra and familiar system that you can switch back and forth between as often as you want just by pressing the LZ button. And this effectively allows you to set up two totally different types of character layouts to engage in any type of combat. And if you thought that was a lot to consider, there's also crests that you can find that allow you access to certain abilities. These crests can be found throughout the course of your gameplay or even occasionally purchased at a shop and can grant you abilities such as increasing the attack power of your familiar or even decreasing the attack speed and attack power of any opponents you may be facing. But in order to keep you from getting too terribly OP, these are limited by a point system that can only be increased by finding or purchasing a prayer bead. But as there are only a finite number of skill points for the dozens of skills that you can unlock, you'll really have to play around to figure out exactly which combinations of skills suit your specific playstyle. And while Luca Born of a Dream is definitely a fast-paced top-down hack-and-slash adventure, it's also deeply nested within the mechanics of an RPG. And if you didn't get enough character customization through all of the crests and mantras and familiars that you can combine in any number of different ways, there's also a leveling up system. Every single time you engage in combat in the game, whether it's with a boss or a mob, you'll gain experience points that function more like a spendable currency. And this currency can be spent on choosing one of four different semi-randomized options for every time you level up at the nearest checkpoint. So more or less, every time you have the ability to level up, you'll be able to pick one of four different options, whether it's increasing your health, increasing your charge meter, increasing your attack power, or maybe even gaining a new skill, you'll have to pick one of the four options available, and that will be the only stat or skill you increase for that level up. And while certain players might more appreciate that kind of across-the-board every stat increases level up system, the way Luca Born of a Dream has it set up allows for an incredibly finite tuning of the character in the way that you want to play it. 
For my playthrough personally, I saw getting engaged in close combat is way too big of a risk because honestly, every encounter is just really challenging. So I put all skills, crests, and mantras to giving me range, more attack damage with my familiar, or increasing the rate of recharge for my familiar's charge bar, as well as increasing the charge bar length. But doing this meant that I had to sacrifice health and power upgrades, as well as sacrifice any sort of modifications or augmentations to my stamina bar. And yes, if you were wondering, there is actually a level cap. If this weren't complicated enough though, there are a few bars or meters spread around the screen that you might want to take note of, and that might actually take playing the entire game through to even figure out what they do. To the top left, there's obviously your HP, your charge bar, and your stamina bar. With your HP being refilled anytime you come to a checkpoint, your charge bar, which is the energy for your familiar, depleting every time you fire a ranged shot, and refilling every time you make a successful melee attack. The blue stamina bar underneath is obviously going to deplete every time you make a physical attack, but will recharge on its own pretty quickly as soon as you stop. And it's the juggling of these three bars that actually sets pretty much the dynamic for how combat needs to take place. At the bottom right of the screen, you'll notice the experience points or that experience currency that you can spend in shops. And at the top right of the screen is another meter that's not quite explained, but seems to slowly creep up the longer you play the game. This is, however, in all reality, your corruption meter, and the longer that you cruise through and the more areas you explore and the more demons that you defeat in this ephemeral, fantastic world, the more corruption you actually become susceptible to. And so, in a sense, while it won't just end the game if it reaches 100, it will affect the types of endings that you're allowed to access if the bar does get completely full. So, in a way, it acts as a timer, in a way, it acts as a motivation, and it definitely encourages that sense of anxiety to always make you check yourself for dying too many times or re-exploring too many areas. But on that note of corruption, I suppose now is as good a time of any to actually talk about some of that overarching and underlying story. The game's developer actually created Luca Born of a Dream in order to capture some of the anxieties, fears, and issues that he had in his own life growing up. And while some of this may seem incredibly apparent, like the developer's struggle growing up in a Roman Catholic environment, a lot of the other sub and super texts aren't as clearly spelled out, but are equally as impacting on the player. And it's quite possibly for this reason in a nutshell that it's so hard to encapsulate what exactly the story is that this game's trying to tell. Every player will come from their own background and have their own life struggles that they've dealt with, and that may cause them to connect with the story of the game in their own unique ways. And that is, in a sense, why I don't even want to try and tell any of you the way I interpreted the game, because it needs to be a unique experience. Overall, I'd have to say I absolutely loved my time with this game, and though it is a bit off-putting at the beginning with the graphics, it's something that you really grow to love because you start to understand why it was done that way the deeper you get into the game. So if you're a fan of RPGs, if you're a fan of fast twitch hack-and-slash combat games, or even if you're a fan of dungeon crawlers, just with the way this game is laid out mechanically, you might really enjoy your time with Luca Born of a Dream. But anyway, as much as I'd actually like to say about this game, that does about wrap up the review of Luca Born of a Dream now on the Nintendo Switch. So if you enjoyed the review, or especially if you found it helpful, feel free to throw me a like or a comment to show your support, and don't forget to click that little bell icon when you subscribe to stay updated with the latest content. There are new and unique indies coming out literally every single day, so there's always going to be some cool new game to find out about right here. But if you want to get more involved with the channel, or you just want to see what I'm up to, or even talk to some of your fellow gamers, you can click any of the links in the bottom right corner of our channel's banner for Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, or even our channel's Discord. But anyway, this has been Budget Gamers. As always, thanks for watching.